Today we're going to look at how to create our own graph. So we're going to create a bar graph today. But first, we need to get the data for our graph. So there are two different types that we can look at today. The first type is going to be using a poll or survey to create our graph. First, we need to ask a question to a group of people with set choices. We record their answers in a chart, then use that data for our graph. The second type is how we use data from our observations. So first we put our collection in categories by color, shapes, sizes, or types. Then we count how many are in each category. So I'm going to walk you through how to complete this today. So our first step is choosing a topic. So if you're going to do the first type of graph, which is using a survey or a poll, then you need to come up with the question that you're going to ask your friends. So I'm going to use the example today of what our favorite subject is. So I'm going to say, what is your favorite subject? Question mark. Then I need to have four set choices for them to choose from. So I'm going to type in for my first one, math, then spelling, reading, or writing. So those will be the four choices that I'll give my friends when I ask them the question. If you're going to do the second one today, so maybe you don't have people to ask questions to because you wanna ask a group of people. So I'd say around at least 10 people would be a good start to a survey. So maybe I don't have anyone to ask today. So instead, I'm just going to make a bar graph from my data. So I'm gonna use some cereal. I'm gonna use some Fruit Loops. So I'm going to put in my collection is Fruit Loops. My categories would be the colors of Fruit Loops. So there are green Fruit Loops, we have blue Fruit Loops, we have purple Fruit Loops, and there's that reddish pinkish color Fruit Loop. So those would be my categories, and I would count how many in my bowl that I had. So I can even say Fruit Loops in my bowl, okay? So now I need to actually get that data, okay? So at the top is where we put our title. So if I was using my Fruit Loops one, this would be Fruit Loops in my bowl, or I'm going to use the example of our favorite subjects. So favorite subjects. On the left hand side is where we're going to put those categories. So the one, two, three, four from the slides before. So I had math, spelling, reading, and writing. So I would need to take my survey, ask my friends the question, and then the right side is where I'd actually put in the numbers. So this was the numbers I got when I went through and asked my friends. On this one, I included myself. You don't have to in your surveys, but you can always include yourself, especially when you're talking about favorites, because it's fun to see the data from them. Again, if I was using my Fruit Loop example, I would put the colors of Fruit Loops on the left side and the number of each one in my bowl on the right side. Now we're ready for step three, which is to actually make the bar graph. So at the top here, you can see it says to add our title to the top. So I'm going to add the title of favorite subjects. At the very bottom in these four boxes is where we're going to put our categories. So I'm going to use math, spelling, reading, and then writing. 
if I was doing my Fruit Loop examples, this is where I'd be putting the colors. Then we also have to label our sides, so our axes. So this would be number of people in this one, or the numbers on this side would represent the number of Fruit Loops. The bottom part is telling us our subjects. If I was using my Fruit Loop example, I would put Fruit Loops at the bottom. So I knew what these were talking about. Then I need to make sure that my data is matching my chart or my table that I had already filled out. So my first one, math here, has three people. So I need to come to my bar graph and make it show three people. I can use my shapes tool that is at the top here it says shape when I highlight over it. We're going to click on that. We'll go to shapes and then we're going to click on the first one which is a rectangle. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can actually fill each little box or I can come to the three. You see how there's a little plus sign? I can come to the three and put that plus sign right in the corner. I want it on my left side. So the left corner, then I'm going to click and drag it to the bottom right corner. You can see those blue little lines moving as I drag and drop. Once I get it down, my cursor fits right in there, then I let go and I've made a rectangle. I can change the color of this rectangle up at the top where it says fill color and I can choose a color for my graph. These little boxes here, when I hover over, you'll see that there are some arrows that show up. So if you didn't make it perfect, we can move the arrow up or down to change the rectangle. I can do the same thing for the next one, or when the boxes show, I can use Control Copy, which is Control C at the same time, and then Control V at the same time to make a new box. So again, I'm gonna look at my table here. Spelling has five, so I need to move this. I'll drag and drop it to spelling. Then I'm gonna use that arrow to bring it up to the top of the five. Okay, then I need to see what my reading, so reading had two. Again, if I need to, I can come back up to the shape tool, shapes, rectangle, I can make a new one by putting the cursor, that plus sign, in the left corner and dragging down to the bottom right corner. I can change the color by coming up to this little paint can and selecting the color. For writing, I come back to my table and I look. There are six for writing. So again, I can do my Control C, Control V to make a new one and drag it over. Then I use the little box, make sure there's an arrow so I'm not moving the whole thing. So when I see all four arrows, it means I'm going to move the whole shape. When I see the little arrows showing me the direction, that shows me what direction I'm changing the shape. So I need to go up to the six. Again, I dragged and dropped. So now my table matches my bar graph and I'm all done. To make it look nice, I can go ahead and delete these arrows by selecting them. I can hold the shift key down and select a bunch of them at once. I can delete them to kind of clean up my graph a little bit. So it looks like it's a finished product. All right, now it's your turn to do these.